Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Sennis Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about game shows that changed their childhood. <laughs> changed, well, didn't. Okay. Let's not say it changed. Well, that's, that's a big word. <laughs> shaped. I think the word is shaped <laughs> our childhood. Shaped. I'm sweetie. And I'm sweetie. And I'll take the physical challenge. Woo! Oh! Physical challenge! That means... We decided to watch a couple episodes of Double Dare or Family Double Dare. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. wow. Which is actually Nickelodeon's longest running game show of all time. Ran from 1986 to 1993 with the host, the amazing host, Mark Summers. Mark with a C, Summers. Wow, guys. Summers with a U or an O? Oh, I think it's a U. It's a U. Um, not to be confused with the Figure It Out host, Summer, Summer Sanders. Sanders. Whoa. Um, but, wow, Double Dare really brings me back. Ooh, so good. So we, good. I mean, this was a, I, wait, is this, you said this was Nickelodeon's first game show? Or no? Nickelodeon's first game show and longest running game oh, wow. show. Okay. Um, it originally had an afternoon time slot and was so popular that was at one point the most popular show on cable television or something in that, well, that, what that was time, the time slot. slot. It was the afternoon, apparently. Afternoon time slot. So everyone was at work and it was like the one hour <laughs> well, where it kids, was kids were home. And like the way they formed this film, uh, this show was that obviously Nickelodeon, well, Nickelodeon started in like the late 70s, I think. Right? Yeah, it was a lot earlier than we thought. Yeah. So, and they knew that kids like to watch game shows with their parents because that's the great thing about game shows, right? It's like not like that hard. It's always fun. Like, not, yeah, they're not you know, usually inappropriate. Kind of watch yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they knew that kids loved watching game shows, but they had not to this point really had any game shows geared towards children. And Nickelodeon being like a, you know, a kid focused, a kid's television station, let's be real. They were like, dude, we're missing a fucking game show. Like, let's let's get one. So they made this game show, which was kind of a mashup of, what did they say? Like a trivia question, because there's a trivia aspect to it, question aspect to it. And then uh, also based on the show Mousetrap, which I'm not familiar with, which I do yes, have to. The trap? one where you build the trap and you, it's like you build it as you go. And then, the, I mean, oh, it's it was so cool. Game. But like, I thought they meant like an old game show called Mousetrap. Uh, no, I thought you meant a I thought you said a board game. No, no. Uh, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe. So, but I like I have you ever watched that like show uh, the channel buzzer, which has like all the old game shows on it. So there is one that has these like weird physical challenges that teams have to do, which is very oh, similar. So to maybe this. that's it. But is that? Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. Anyway. Amazing show because what they did to it was that they did the trivia aspect, they did the physical challenge aspect of it, but what makes it super kid like? It's fucking gross. Gross. <laughs> yeah. So like I know and Nickelodeon just like unlocked this magical box that was like kids like messes. Messes. Which is gross like, things. <clears throat> not Slime. true for everyone. And Sweetie and I talked about this when we watched the Pippi Longstocking movie, which is a terrible, terrible movie. But we realized that like <laughs> Apparently, fun, real fun to kids is getting like super messy, messy and like fucking stuff up, which <laughs> I don't remember that ever being like a thing yeah. in my life. Me neither. But I found the show extremely yeah, entertaining. But we still loved it. Not like the the mess part of it, though. I guess I don't know why I liked it, but it I just, liked it. Yeah, I don't know. It was like fast paced. There was just something about it that was oddly soothing, even though it was like based on chaos and people doing crazy things with shit. And I had and like a really weird sense of joy out of the way that the the floor will be like covered in a mess. And then on the next commercial break, it's like shiny and new again. And the tile is like so shiny. It looks amazing. Yeah. Like I just get like such a weird joy out of that. Like right. who who does who's the genius that mops the floor? How do they do it? What is their process? I need to know. I know. And I didn't get a read on how long it took them to film an episode of this show. Mm. I read the Wikipedia and I should have like kind of read that. But um, who even fucking knows? I mean, when we did Legends of the Hidden Temple, remember, like there was like a cleanup aspect to that, too. And we, like those shows took because we compared it to when I was on Jeopardy and how fast that show is. And it basically runs almost the identical length to what it does on TV because you stop for commercial breaks and stuff. But any show where there's massive cleanup, supermarket sweep, you know, when they have to clean up in between episodes, it just takes them so much mm. longer. So I wonder how much this one was. How many shows could they film in a day if there was like massive cleanup yeah. involved? I don't know. 
Seems like so, a lot of work. I hope yeah. you got paid very well. Oh, totally. Um, so to prepare for this, we watched a full episode of regular Double Dare, which was the one that came first and was the one with just the two kids. Presumably, they would be strangers to you, kind of like Legend of the Hidden Temple. They would just like match you up. You know, you'd get paired with some rando. Um, so you don't know. Oh, like Nick Arcade. Remember, we thought mm-hmm. that too. Yep. Where they don't really, you don't know any like of the person, like how they are at anything, whether it's physical stuff or smarts. Which from the one we saw, let's let's be honest, the boys were dead fucking weight. Sucked. Dummies. Um, Yeah, and then we watched like an episode and a half of Family Double Double Dare, which is uh, a mother and a father and then two kids. Um, And I think that we remembered watching more Family Double Double Dare when we were little. They did much more of that. But we enjoyed the regular Double Dare more, I guess. Um, So the concept. Sorry, I was going to say... And I reason I think when I was watching a little bit of the family one that we did today, the reason why I like the kid one better, well, it's just easier and it's just kids, right? And obviously the trivia is a little bit different because you have to make it so kids and adults can kind of don't know it maybe. But also I found that like they mostly did the gross out stuff, like completely putting the parents in those situations because I feel like it was fun to watch the parents Mm -hmm. be like, ew, like stuff's falling on me and a pie in the face and I'm so dirty because I'm an adult and I can't handle me. You know, so that was the aspect of this one. Like, let's do these horrible things to your parents, which now watching that, I'm like, that's kind of dumb. Yeah, (laughs) that's true. Good point. So the concept is the two teams, um, they open with like a, a physical challenge between them, which usually involves some like nonsense game where they're like, we're going to blindfold you and you're going to hold these two symbols and then your partner is going to throw an egg at you and you have to clap the egg in between the symbols and whoever breaks the egg first wins. Like total fucking nonsense. Best job ever, though, is being the people in the room that are like, okay, guys, what's the game? What are the physical challenges today? Like, they're, they're so fucking random. Yeah, I can't handle so it. Um, and, like, he- for this one we watched, heavy on the eggs. Yeah. A lot they, of egg they, like, stuff. only had eggs at their disposal for some reason. Hadn't gotten the whipped cream delivered as of right, yet. Right, because I feel like later um, on, like we said, it was, like, all pie shit. all pies. So, so they could start with that, and then there's some trivia around. So what happens is the whoever wins that physical challenge gets the first question posed to them if they answer it they get points if they don't they say dare and the next team goes and they either answer it or send it back and say double dare and then if that team doesn't know it still they say we'll take the physical challenge and then they have to do another physical challenge and they get like some amount of points i wonder if anyone ever did like the be the bullshit kind of thing where they like do know, know. it but they say they don't know it so then they get more points and money and then they just i don't think that'd be like yeah, a really good strategy like no one is that smart but um, so the thing though that i think must have to happen and we talked about this when we watched the episode that it's it's a boring game if someone is just like whipping through those trivia questions so i think there must be the kids are like well you have to say at least double dare at least one time so we can get like a physical challenge in there yeah. because those are our like the funnest and the trivia questions like started out super easy ready guys here's an example what is the official language of germany <laughs> Uh, French. Yeah. <laughs> and you could kids be like, it was this a trick question? Yeah. <laughs> and even I thought that. I was like, shit, what is it? There were some, <laughs> there were some stumpers in there, though. Yeah, I wrote down the stumpers. Um, I mean, I we'll, we'll go over them. I do that you shouted out the answers to all of them, including the easy, the really easy ones. You were like, German. <laughs> <laughs> the brain. <laughs> like, I'm like, yes, sweetie, I know. <laughs> oh, my God. But, but they got progressively harder, and I was actually very impressed by the level being the trivia goddess that I am, um, very, very impressed by the level of questions. Some were even stumpers to me, which is pretty cool. And I wrote down two of the stumpers, because I think there were only two. Um, ready? Here you go. Who? And Sweetie got this one. So <laughs> I was like, can I answer? Now. Um, what comic doctor from 1987 uh, was in this film that made the most money? <laughs> Is that how it was worded? <laughs> no, not or at is all. That, sweetie? that was like a dyslex- dyslexic version of that question. And I don't think they were working, looking for the name of the film. They're looking for the actor, yeah, maybe. This comedic this actor. actor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we were like, ooh, who's like a big comedian in 1987? I guess Robin Williams. Eh, wrong. Sweetie guessed. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, Beverly Hills Cop. Woo! So, Beverly sweetie. Hills Cop 2, yeah, I think. Two. Um, and then the next one was per ounce. 
What candy has the most calories? Tricky. M&M's. Good and plenty. Or Three Musketeers. Sweetie guest. I said good M&M's because I thought that was a trick question. Yeah. We're like, oh, it's got to be the thing that's like the smallest. Right. No, but, but I forgot what a good and plenty sugar was. Is good and plenty. All sugar, okay. no chocolate. Good and plenty's um, are like the devil's poop. Um, <laughs> what is it? Isn't it just like two forms of licorice? They're just like two. Uh, but they're like licorice flavored, aren't, aren't they? Those, no, those are the ones that are all no. Mike and Ike. Mike and Ike's are the good ones. Oh, Mike, those oh, yeah. are like so the good fruit and plenty ones. are the purple and white yeah. ones that are just licorice. You're right. Ew, sick. Who? Those are not good and plenty. Ugh. Those are bad and bad and awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So they had those, and then they had a couple ones where they would like give you like two answers. It was a multiple choice, and then one would be a total bullshit answer. And they still did the double dare on that one. And I'm like, dude, they narrowed it down for you to two. Like, just guess. Um, they did a cool one, like, what uh, name is most popular for U.S. presidents? John, John James, James, or... James or someone that no yeah, one's name was. Right. Harvey. There's a, yeah, no. That was another throwaway one. It was, so, yeah. it was James. I got it right. It Sweetie James. did not. Yeah, I know. Whiff, whiffed that one. Um, so, yeah. So, good. I would say, in general, like, good, good um, questions, challenging, very exciting. Um, so we did, we saw a couple of the double dares, uh-huh. which, um, were pretty interesting. The first one called egg drop. You mean the physical challenges? Sorry, the physical challenges that came out. Yeah. Of the dare round for the trivia. The first being egg drop soup. So what did that entail? This, they put like a little cup on the guy's head and then his partner stood above him and she had to drop an element of egg drop soup, like into the little bowl from above. It was, it didn't seem that hard. And it seemed like if she got like a tiny fraction of whatever she was supposed to drop in the bowl, if she got that in, Mark Summers was like, right. all right, you got oh, it. You're good. I think there were a lot of like weird calls from Mark yeah. when you're like rewatching these. You're like, did that count? Like, were right. there official judges? Um, right. And but, then yeah. like, what? Okay. Fortune cookies are not in the soup. I just want to say that's disgusting and, sl- and slightly racist. Yes, I know. I was like, um, <laughs> are those even the ingredients? Like, what the fuck? Um, that one was kind of dumb, but they got it like immediately. The second one, same team had to do it, uh, which was like an Elvis theme one. And the whole thing was like an Elvis theme day. I forget why. And I'm they like have the, the girl day. of the group put on a cape and an Elvis wig and hold a gu- acoustic guitar <laughs> And her partner has to (laughs) underhand throw eggs and try to get it into the middle of the guitar. So random. And at first it's not going well and you can see the girl like flipping out because the guy is throwing them too slow. She's basically just like whip them at me because it's like kind of hurt. He could throw them however he wants. She's the one who kind of has to guide the guitar to where it can like catch the egg. So she's like, keep going, keep going. And they do it kind of like by the skin of their teeth. And then I think that was the only two physical challenges. This one was very question heavy because the second round ended up being all oh, trivia man. questions, right? It was like the girls were just like, bam, bam. Like this one girl on the team who had been losing was just like coming in hot. Oh, like yeah. Kathy? Get, doing all of them. Okay. Kathy, Kathy was amazing. She had a dud <laughs> and a half for a partner. Kathy, you know, whenever they do those things, they're like, this is Jim and he wants to be a football player. You know, they're like kid occupations where they're like exciting i want to be an astronaut i want to be a fireman you know like cool stuff like that and then they get to kathy and they're like well first of all kathy when they first show her she's like this sweet girl but she's wearing these like coke bottle glasses she's wearing mom glasses let's and they're giant and like i've never seen bigger like i thought she was wearing like safety goggles but they were not they were glasses and they're like kathy wants to be an eye doctor (laughs) we were (laughs) like oh random like what Weird. Like good, then you can get rid of those glasses and get yourself oh, some totally. contacts. You're probably like scarred for life. Poor Kathy. Oh my god, she was so smart. But she knew her shit. Yeah, I was she really like did. Pissed. We Who were knows? like, yeah, Kathy. But they didn't get to do any. Well, they got to do like the group physical challenges. So the the I forgot what the first group physical challenge was. Oh, I don't, I don't know if we saw that one. We did, but I don't remember. It. The, but second they won the second one. Second one was basically like an egg race. You know, when you like put Except an egg not. on a spoon. This was the dumbest. This was really one. dumb. It was a bunch of potatoes on the floor, and they were like, <laughs> "You have to pick up a potato in a spoon and drop it into this dish that's like two centimeters away." Right. And I think they were thinking that like the potatoes were so big that one spoon couldn't you can't hold use, it like but hands. they could hold it so i don't know yeah. who was in charge of picking <laughs> the potatoes out but they picked small ones because they could pick it up in one spoon and just like I mean, walk it I over i think it would have been harder to do an egg 
They just should have done Honestly, it. Honestly, yeah, I, they're I like do slippery, too. Slippery, they're smaller, yeah. they roll. Yeah. Really missed opportunity. Because the potatoes didn't move, no. so you just like shove the spoon so underneath stupid. and you're good. Yeah, that, that guy got fired for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so then the team, not with Kathy and whoever her dud partner was, did not win. The other team wins by like a, by a nose, but also because the girl like knew all the fucking shit. It got to a point where she was not even like conferring <laughs> with her partner. She just like knew it. Like she'd because- fake. She'd like kind of turn to him for a second and like kind kind of lean over and be like fuck this and just answer because it. At, in the beginning of this she would like whisper the answer into his ear and he would make this face yeah, like, like really think about it like he like wasn't like, he, know, like he wasn't behind it and I, he was totally like man kid splaining like something was happening and she was just getting pissed and my favorite part of the other team what like we said kathy just like knew it and was just answering <laughs> Her partner got so excited, even though he contributed like literally <laughs> nothing to the team. He do this like kind of like boy like fist pump like yeah, and like literally knew nothing. Literally contributed like a, nothing to just that like team. the people that contribute nothing when you play trivia. They're like the most excited most and excited. like the most like hardcore like oh I can't believe you got that wrong. Yeah, right, right. exactly. Or and at the end they're like the loudest celebrating the win. Like yes, we won! Oh my god! I'd be like, did you answer any questions? Because I forgot. <laughs> yeah it's good times um okay so then the final obstacle 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 i obstacle can't say course. that word obstacle obstacle <laughs> course sounded out has several elements and each one is like a, a weird gross thing that you have to find a flag at the end of and now eight, this is the eight total eight and then this is the part that confuses me because it seems like part of the game is that you have to hold all the flags because they just keep like stuffing <laughs> stuffing them down their shirt when they find them and then like handing them to somebody but that doesn't seem to ever factor like they don't like count the flags at the end right. and are like you've got all the flags like those flags had to have come out of that shirt i don't know what's <laughs> happening but anyway so like for instance some ones you might remember the giant nose that you have to like pick and pull the flag out of called Picket. Picket. They all had kind of fun names. Yeah. Picket. Um, um, I wrote them all down. Okay. The hamster wheel. Mm-hmm. So that was like always the start. Mm-hmm. Like you run on this big hamster wheel and it lights up like numbers on the side. And then when it gets to number six or whatever, like this boxing globe comes down that holds the flag. The person grabs it. Go. And it's like a relay. So you do like one stunt, then the other. The tank, which sometimes can be, oh, it was filled with water, but with all these balloons on top. So you have to like, and it's kind of like awkward. You got to like wade through all them, but also find the flag like within there. I don't know how there. you find the flag in Well, there. I think he saw it because he like dove for yeah. it. And I uh, think that actually saved them a ton of time. Yeah. The icy trike, which I always remember that one because I'm like, is that melted what? tar? Yeah. What is that <laughs> substance? Like he just says shit. it's slippery substance yeah. of some kind. And you're like on this awkward tricycle and all the kids are obviously too big for tricycles and you have to kind of like, you know, if you're too big on a tricycle and you're like knees stick out and you're like, oh, I can't bike this. So that's basically what it is. <laughs> Pick it. Why am I on this tricycle? Why am I on this tricycle? It's too small for me. Uh, pick it what Sweet just said is this giant nose my favorite one where you just have to pick the nose there's all this green shit in there and then the flag's hidden up inside of it the tunnel which seemed to take up the most time and was annoying because you got to go through this tunnel and then you're like in this little ball pit or something then you go out this other tunnel which had all this like shit on the bottom of it so then you like basically like slide into the shit and then you got to like throw the flag to your partner that's annoying as hell down the hatch also a good one it's like a giant mouth and you slide down the tongue and there's again shit on the bottom um the volcano which was like this giant spewing volcano that the flag's like on top of that and then the blue plate special i feel like was always the end that it was like um a plate with either waffles or pancakes and there was like layers of it and your the flag's like all underneath there and so you got to find the flag. But luckily for this one, they had like literally two seconds left. It was a total cheat. The flag was like sticking out of the side of it. They didn't even have to dig through it at all. So I don't know who set up that prop, but fired. Um, and they fucking won. So what I did not remember about this was that um, you get a prize. So you get a prize. The losers get a prize. And I think they get to keep their money, too. Uh, and the money is like kind of lame. It's like like under like five hundred, or it was like two hundred, four hundred dollars. Yeah, it was like one twenty. Because the like questions the big are one. only like worth twenty and forty bucks, so the money is like not a big deal. But for the obstacle course, you make it there, you get a prize for every obstacle that you do. So potentially, you could walk away with eight fun-filled prizes. 
And that's awesome. And it ended up like adding up to a ton of money. Mm -hmm. So the kids get like a ton of shit. The prices were pretty good. So first of all, the people, so the the runners up, the the kids that don't make it to the obstacle course um, are, they get a bunch of game boards. I mean, game boards, a bunch of board games. (laughs) Dyslexia. Um, Yeah. Um, They're called Thing. Like yeah. I, I don't, so I don't really remember those, totally. but it seemed cool. And then they also got a word whiz, which is like <laughs> fucking bullshit. Was that fun? It was basically like a digital no, dictionary. They're right? always trying to like slip like learning yeah. things in that are le- electronic, so you think they're cool, but then you're like, this is just an electronic dictionary. Yeah. Wow, dumb. Can't wait to just so, like look up words <laughs> on the fly. I'm so excited about it. Which now we do love to do when we're reading like a Kindle book, <laughs> and we're true. like, what does this mean? And That's we just true. click on it. Yeah, but, but I got my 12 year old yeah. like hard. And pass. then the big prize was like a Tyco remote control car, which like cool. Right. Like everyone cool. fucking loved those. I, love, I agree. I would, I would say yes. Super to fun. That. Whatever. Yeah. So then, so the prizes for apps, of course. Um, Prize every task, you said. So one was, an, again, a Tyco remote control car, yep. which I guess they just had tons of those. <laughs> so there's like passing them out to everybody. Like, Never you want Tyco? one? Here you go. I wonder yeah. if Tyco still exists. I don't think Good so. brand. Um, a Mad Magazine skateboard. Skateboards. With- Pat. With arm pads and knee pads included. Hey. Skateboards are so bonus. five years ago. I know. Um, so is Mad Magazine. Like that like oh, wasn't right. really a th- like it maybe in the eighties, but oh, when yeah, I was no, in it school, was a big it was like the naughty thing that like uh, you weren't supposed to look at. Yeah, I remember okay. that. It was very well, cool. I had remember I got a subscription briefly to like Nickelodeon magazine. Oh yeah. Remember that? That's that was cool. good times. Um okay, so there's that. You got a camera was one of the prizes, which was cool. This was big in like the camera days. Remember Liz got a camera for Christmas? Wait, I don't I don't have a camera written down. Yeah, it was a Rico. It was a. Oh, I guess Mike, I missed that one. Whatever. Like M7. No. Because <laughs> they also got the language master, which is right, the which digital is the dictionary. dictionary. The other one was like spelling, I think. Oh, okay. Um, a telescope. Yep. Right. Gift certificate to KB, KB Toys. Toys. I would have went bananas for that. I loved KB Toys. It was awesome. That was like the smaller toy store that was in the malls. Whereas you had like your Toys R Us, which was like the big, mm-hmm. the big end, the huge toy store. Uh, CD player. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Would have loved that. Everyone wanted a CD oh my player God. back then. I would have loved that. And then the the grand prize. A vacation to Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Woo! So again, this is like back in like whatever, like Nick Arcade, whatever. The prize was a trip to like Florida, and you're like, great. Like, aren't we in Florida? We just got here. No, um, Legends of the Hidden Temple, or no, uh, that, or one was South Carolina, maybe. Yeah, and we were but like, still. cool. I mean, like Palm Springs, sure, whatever. But like, I don't know. I guess as a kid, like if it has a pool, you're fine. I don't know. Palm Springs is like in the desert. Like though. again, like I don't feel like kids would be too excited about vacations unless they included amusement parks. And I was gonna say, give. I mean, I know they can't do Disney World because they're basically like kind of competitors and they were Universal, but I don't know Knott's Berry Farm, like literally, like anything else. Wally Dream World, big. yeah, yeah. Um, go, New York City, I don't know. Like I'm like, li- like who wants to go to Palm Springs as a kid? I, I mean, want- they did talk about like a water park and everything. I don't know. And again, I'm entirely confused by those um, vacation prizes because is it like you and a parent? Mm. Do you get to go? Your, your, they treat your whole family. What if your family is like eight kids? Yeah, it's a pretty it's a predicament. I'm yeah. not sure. So, you know, they always tell you like today's prizes equal a cash value of sixty two hundred dollars, which in uh, we said this was probably around like 1990 it was twelve thousand dollars in, in 1990 money. OK. And also being on game shows, I know now that like you have to pay taxes to the government for all that stuff. And if it's a prize one, you have to pay taxes on the pr- price of the prizes. Ew. Yeah, it's really bad. So Dumb. it sucks. Like if you get a jet ski on, um, you know, Price is Right, you got to pay 25% in taxes of that. So you got to come up with, Ew. you know, 25% yeah. of whatever your jet ski costs. What is that? How does that work for kids? Though? Do your parents have to pay for that? Yes, I'm sure it's all in like some giant contract they have to sign oh, that when they sucks. Yeah. So yeah, maybe like, or maybe the show took care of it and gave them like money. I don't know, probably not. But um, yeah, I would say from all the ones we've done game shows that we've done that this is like kind of top of the top of the pack for prizes i would say yeah. i would have been yeah. pretty pumped. so far i mean the kids were pumped 
Um, there weren't any roller skates, but like, I mean, roller no blades. No hush puppies. And no hush puppies. And thankfully, no chupa chupa whatever oh pops that God. Sweeney was Thank talking God about. God they stopped giving uh, candy. Like, worst <laughs> yeah. idea ever. Dumb. Why well, some to ply um, lollipops? I would also, there's, so there's a couple of sidekicks in this. So Harvey is like the announcer who like says all the prizes and like how much everything is. He was a radio DJ in Philadelphia. They, they, they like were like, oh, he needs a job. So they like asked him to be on it. So he was always like the voice. And what's nice about him is that he wasn't just like a regular announcer, like in, in Jeopardy or like whatever, where there's like this person behind the scenes and you don't always see them. Like sometimes they'll, they'll, put the camera on that person and show them, but oftentimes not. Like, Saturday Night Live, like, usually not, right? Right. So, this, he was, like, a part of the show, and, like, he usually came out, like, at the end and, like, did a little, like, gab thing with Mark Summers, yeah. and it was yeah, really like, funny. And so, yeah. it was like, Harvey, ha <laughs> ha, what a kook. Um, so, it was him, and then there was, like, permanent, the way they bill her, is, like, permanent stage assistant Robin. <laughs> I remember as soon as she came on the stage, I was like, Robin, but those people always wore all gray, the the gray sweatsuit like combo. And so it was her and like some other guy, but they were basically just like helping the kids. But I remember, yeah, I remembered her so much. And she, I think also co-hosted, um, that's um that thing you do um what would you do i think she was had a part in that too so i think that's also why we remember her a lot but yeah she was great and she's always like explaining you can see her like so the kids are like what do i do and she like is explaining to them like why don't you do this yeah and like cheering them on and i like if mark would like miss an instruction of like the one where the girl had to catch the eggs in the guitar like he left out the part that she could like use any part of her body to like get the egg into the center of the guitar yeah, as long like, as she didn't like cross like, the line. Yeah. so she like asked a question which was like pretty cool and i'm like wondering how if they ever had to like redo those stunts or it was all just like okay you got like one take on this or like i don't think so because I, I feel like things like silly things happened unless somebody like blatantly cheated or something yeah. maybe but other than that and then they had a part where like robin and whoever the other like cleanup guy was did this like Elvis Presley because it was like an Elvis Presley theme so they did this like weird <laughs> dance but they were like cracking up and like all the adults were cracking up it was up. so I weird know. I don't know why we're injecting like weird comedy bits into like that whole episode was like <laughs> was Elvis weird. theme so instead of saying the actual names of the obstacle course Mark Summers would put like an Elvis song yeah. and I was like can you just say the real name right. <laughs> I'm trying to take notes here, Mark. I know. I'm so confusing. Um, I'm like, what the fuck is but, this? But yeah, so Mark Summers, right. great game show host, probably the one you think of first when you think of like Nickelodeon game show Definitely. host. Yeah. Yep. So he apparently was, they wanted to get originally oh, like some sort of famous game host. Dana game, Carvey. Oh. No, the first one was some famous, other famous oh. game show host and he couldn't do it. And then D- Dana Carvey, they wanted second, but he got auditioned for SNL. So he said, see ya. Good decision, Dana. Um, and then they found this guy who was a warm up guy, warm up comedian for like other game shows, I guess, mm-hmm. other TV shows. So, you know, that guy who's like warming up the crowd and gets everybody like, you know, all excited because all those shows were like filmed in front of live studio audiences. So you have to get the audience like all pumped up, mm-hmm. you know, like not like Jeopardy where you couldn't like make a peep. <laughs> Um, they had applause meters for Jeopardy, but like you weren't really supposed to get all nuts. So, you, you know, you need a good high energy crowd and he would be that person. So they like auditioned him and they liked like something he did. I forget something I auditioned, like really impressed them. So like sweet. They then showed him to focus groups and the focus groups thought that Mark Summers looked 10 years younger than he actually was. And so the studio was like, you can't tell your real age to anybody. <laughs> It's so weird. Years. It's so weird. Strange? Like, who cares? So he was 34 when they started this. So he had to pretend to be 24. He was 34? Yes. Can okay. you believe that? Is that why? So in this Elvis episode, Mark Summers, like, puts on an Elvis cape and is, like, doing silly things. And the crowd is going bananas. And they're, like, all the women are, like, woo! like Uncle Jesse just walked in and like did an Elvis impression but no it was like weird Mark Summers and I was like is he like a sex like symbol right now what is it it made me really uncomfortable Um, but that makes sense now you know what so I also really remember about him and just watching this this few little episodes his outfits right Mm -hmm. so he always wore like a shirt and a tie and like kind of a crazy blazer or like a crazy tie 
jeans, and then he always had the most immaculate white sneakers, despite this being a very messy show with like slime and colored shit everywhere. The guy was immaculate. Well, they all did. They all did. And I saw, I was listening to the end of the show. They say that re- every contestant gets a free pair of Reeboks. Oh, that's why. So I bet they were like a main sponsor of Double Dare. So that's yes. why he always had like a nice new pair oh every show. Oh, my God. But yeah. Those so stuck yeah. Out. And they were like short jeans. Yeah. So you saw like the whole sneaker. It was weird. <laughs> So Mark, so Mark Summers famously has OCD and has been very um, vocal in like talking about hit that illness. He's been on Oprah. Um, yeah, and it's just so bizarre that he was on a game show that revolves around like chaos and making a giant and, mess of and things. He never got messy. Like, yeah, they did. Stuff. They threw pies at him and oh, stuff, they and they, they showed they all that stuff. So you're like, what are you doing, Mark? It's so funny. But, but I think he was great. Yeah. He was so good with the kids. He really like cheered him on. I felt like he was super positive. He was funny. He was charming. He had his, when he was doing the trivia, he'd do like good little, you know, mm-hmm. I, th- I thought he was a perfect host. Yeah, I think he did great. great. 100%, 100% A plus grade. Um, so they're bringing Double Dare back, um, which was announced recently. I think, I don't know if it already started or like what the deal is. It did. In June. Nickelodeon started it again in June. It's, they changed it a little. Sweetie wouldn't let me watch a new episode of it tonight, but. It's a woman host. Um, it's a woman host. Ooh, is it Robin? Just kidding. No. Um, <laughs> I yeah, wish. Young gal. Uh, cool. Yeah. So that's neat. So I love, I love when a, a show comes back, you know, it really makes you feel happy yeah and i wonder how kids will uh react to it today right. do they still like messes yeah i mean i think it's kind of universal kid thing i mean that's the thing that makes it kind of like mm-hmm. well it could last forever and i'd love to see what they're giving for prizes these days honestly right that'd be a good comparison yeah, yeah. well maybe i'll watch it someday to report back sure. and let you know um if you guys have thoughts on double dare or family double dare or any of super sloppy double dare or like any of the iterations as maybe you do i don't know um come find us on twitter at <laughs> the sweetie club <laughs> like really fuck that up um at the sweetie club or on instagram at large marge sent us thank you as always for listening bye, bye.